right, good afternoon. We're live at Kelly Automotive Park once again for a matinee Sunday game when the Blue Sox hosting the West Virginia Myers looking to get back on track after a couple losses in a row. Sitting at eight and nine on the summer as well as, well as uh, Miners. I'm Jaron Steele joined by Joel Norman. Uh, Joel, last night 12-6 loss, but uh, Looking to rebound today. They've had some success against West Virginia. This yeah, year. absolutely. It's the best way to put it. Some success. You know, you look at on the season. You know, Butler five and two versus the Miners so far. It's been a real key. Is just playing last season's Prospect League champions for whatever reason. You know, they've had their struggles. You know, West Virginia started the season one and six, but the thing is, they've really turned things around since then. They're seven and three since that rough start. So maybe not the same team Butler was smacking around to start the season, but. Looking to get back on track, as you mentioned today. Well, we'll give you the lineup for the Miners here. Ryan Shul will lead it off. Wear number 25, followed by the designated hitter, number 23, Justin Mitchell. Then it'll be number seven, Austin Norman, in the three spot. Dan Ward, the cleanup man, wears number six. Number 22, John Hagen, will bat fifth. Yvonne Acuna will bat sixth and wear number eight. Then number three, Brett Totties, will bat seventh. Cody Callaway will bat ace and wear number 12, and Colby Johnson rounds out the order wearing number two. Mike Klingensmith on the hill for the Blue Sox from IUP. He's had a really good start against these buyers. Uh, opening week on a, on a Sunday. Last Sunday, start wasn't uh, wasn't as good. Yeah, not so much. You, you talked about that start against the Miners back on June 4th. Seven innings pitch, two earned runs, you know, seven hits, three walks. Did have the five strikeouts, but as you mentioned, the last time against Lafayette, not quite not the way he won, nine earned runs, but comes in with a one and one record, 761 ERA. First pitch is a called strike. Defensively for Butler, Bolton is behind home plate, Ferguson at first, Maglione at second, Gulakowski at third, Meeker at shortstop, Murphy, Carew, and Gunn left to right in the outfield. Swinging strike, it's 0-2 on Shul, or yeah, Shul, who was pretty uh, pretty solid last night. Had a triple, a single, He's, uh, he was a uh, menace at the top of the order. He has scored two runs as well, two for five, showing also, you know, yeah, that RBI hit too, but trying to get that leadoff batter out to start. Which misses a little bit away. Not a bad spot. One, two. Clinging Smith from Punxsutawney, known for its groundhog. That they pull out of a shadow, or to see if he sees his shadow every year. <laughs> pull him out of a shadow would be pretty yeah. remarkable. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> they pull him out of a, a hole. <laughs> Poor guy. He's down there sleeping. Doesn't have his own choice on the matter. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. It's a swing strike, and Shul is down to begin the game. Good start for Klingensmith. Absolutely, because that's a big thing to look at for him is the strikeout to walk ratio. On the season, he's now got eight strikeouts, but has 10 walks overall. So got to be careful with those walks. Walked six last time out against Lafayette on the 11th. Klingensmith, that's a Weekend starter for IUP this spring. Shown the uh, ability to get a lot of good strikeouts. It's called strike here to Mitchell. But he also uh, had a bit of a, a bit of a high earned run average at 782. But, yeah. but he had a lot of strikeouts and I felt figure in a wooden bat league that'll come down. If you're able to if your if your stuff uh, is as good as what it seemed like it was in, in the uh, College season, then he, he'll he'll rack up the K's here too with the wooden bats. You've got to think there's going to be less hard hit balls because of a wooden bat over those metal ones they use at the college level. That almost can turn some hits to a little bit better than what they should be sometimes. So yeah, this is you know if you have really good pitching in a league like this, it's going to help you out big time. Well, here is the 0-2. It is high. Uh, Mitchell designated hitter tonight, uh, this afternoon I should say. So used to saying tonight. We only have th we have three afternoon games all summer. Got one of them right here. And all of them are against the Miners. Bolton has to come out of the crouch. Last time when these two played an afternoon game, didn't really feel like one. No, it was a rainy <laughs> day the whole time. We had, what, two or three delays yeah. that day? No sun. No, not at all. But today, much different. Yeah. Storms are on the horizon, so hopefully we can get this thing in this afternoon. I think it's uh, around 5, 6 o'clock. So we got, so we got some time to get through this thing. Yeah, 87 right now in Butler, so you know great weather you're talking about, and you know a little bit, a couple clouds out there too, so it's not too too humid right now. Yeah, here's the 2-2 again. That's a bit high. Mitchell doing a good job here. He was down 0-2, has fouled a couple off, and has got himself into a full count. And here's the payoff. Klingon Smith pitches high for ball four. That was a good at bat by Mitchell. 
Yeah, sure was. Working that count full after being down and then doing a good job just reaching base after that. And you get the batter aboard here. That's the guy you really you don't want to face him. Austin Norman leads the prospect league with that 444 batting average. So, you know, you hate to have the runner on for this guy at the plate. Norman, uh, take the call of strike. Yeah, he was good last summer, too. One of the better hitters in the league. And he's proven it again this year. Yeah, sometimes that experience, like you're talking about like playing here last year, coming back another year. Maybe you get used to seeing some of the same guys and just you get used to it all. 0-1. Oh, oh, big cut. He's got him 0-2. Boy, Klingon Smith really bringing the heat on that one, too. And that was a <laughs> very hittable one. Just Norman looked like he guessed wrong on that pitch. A little bit of a lead from Mitchell. He's not straying too far, though. And the 0-2. Ooh, high. Brings Fulton out of the crowd. Seems like when he gets 0-2, he might be overthrowing a little bit because a lot of his pitches are missing upstairs. He may be just trying to get them to chase. It might be overthrowing like you're talking about, or, you know, like you want that chase outside. You try a, a fastball out, hoping they're, they see the pitch they want, but just swing a, a flail away at something that they're not going to be able to hit. Another one misses high. Seems like he's just not not able to get down, in the, in, and he's just leaving everything. Well, not everything, but everything once he gets 0-2 up. Mm -hmm. Doing a good job of getting these 0-2 counts. We've seen it with the first three hitters, like you're talking about. But, yeah, just putting guys away is what really separates you know the average from the great. Now step off in a throw over. It was a oh, good play good by Ferguson because that was a, not a, a good toss over by Klingensmith. He had to kind of trap that ball. Keep it from going out past him into a right field corner. And he gets him on that high fastball for a strikeout. Last night, Norman broke his bat in about six pieces, although it took him three times to break it over his knee <laughs> before he finally got, it, got it the job done. Oh, there you go. <laughs> try, try again until you succeed, but. Good stuff from Klingensmith. He did go upstairs a bit on the outside, so it was that similar pitch we saw before, but that time it just finally got Norman to chase. Now here's Dan Ward. Talk about it. He's off to a good start. He's only been there for a little bit. He's hitting 318, but last summer he was the best player in the league by far. Wow. Uh, he, at least on our half of the division. Only 22 at-bats this season, as you mentioned. Hasn't gotten a lot of experience. He just got, yeah, he just got here this week. He pops one out of play to even a count of one apiece. I mentioned it last night, I'll say it again today. He had 21 homers in, in the college season. Did uh, he really? Yeah, for Tennessee Wesleyan. And he, wow. He's a, just, uh, I have a feeling after this season he'll be, he'll be heading into the uh, uh, professional ranks somewhere, probably an independent ball to start. That would make sense. Yeah, you can work your way around plenty, too. You know, you kind of wonder if there's other options out there available. That, and some people might discredit that because of the school he's at, maybe the level of play. But you're dominating the lowest level. That's a pretty good sign. You probably deserve to be up at the next spot. Yeah, two and one is the count. He actually was a freshman of the year at Ohio before he, he left school for a little bit. Before, and then he come back, come foul ball out of play. Mm. Um, and then uh, spent some time at D D Division II East Eastern New Mexico, and then as a graduate transfer this year, he went to Tennessee Wesleyan. So. Sometimes you just see guys, maybe like you said, taking that time off. You know, maybe you need to fix something, or you're not, you're not quite sure what you're looking to do. You have to take some time off to reset. But it's good to see him getting back at that level and succeeding again. It's, he, he's just a big boy too. I mean, yeah, you can I see it in the batter's box for sure. Pitches outside, runner takes off. That'll be a stolen base. The ball pops out of the middle of Bolton. I want to say Happy Father's Day to everybody out there listening. Um, happy Father's Day to my dad and all the dads of the players and uh, whoever may be out there uh, tuning in this afternoon. Seventh stolen base of the season for Mitchell. They're tied for the team lead now. So you can see why uh, Klingon Smith was given a few looks, but he kind of left him alone for a while, and it was an easy steal a second. 3-2 again, popped out of play. Might have hit a car. Couldn't tell. Couldn't tell. <laughs> I don't think it was loud enough. No. <laughs> of course, the advertisement for safe life, but yeah. <laughs> That's 
by park real far behind home plate. You never know. There's those close spots on the third base side, but you gotta park far away. Yep. Ground ball off the base out into center field. That's bad luck single, and that's gonna score a run. A two out RBI single for Dan Ward makes it one nothing. That ball, I don't think anybody would have got to it, but they definitely wouldn't have scored if it didn't hit off the second base. It wasn't a hard hit ball, but it was at the right spot, and of course, hit right off the base, obviously the right the right place too, but you keep thinking, if that doesn't hit the base, it goes to the right or the left and into the outfield. There might be a play at home. You might have to hold. I, I would imagine they probably would have held him. That's what I would have thought, but it's hard to say, but yeah, that bounce adds just three or four more seconds for Mitchell. He came around to easily score. That ball fouled into the screen by Hagen, John Hagen. Playing third base for West Virginia. He's got long blonde hair. 222 average this season through 36 at bats. Been a little bit of a tough go for him. Time called. Yeah, he's um, Goldilocks out there. I was I was gonna wait to, for you to say it first. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I should, but <laughs> Goldilocks. Oh, one. I'm trying to think of a player in the in the majors that has that type of hair, and I can't really. Gold. I mean, gold the closest gold. might be like Noah Syndergaard. Yeah, you could say, but it's not that gold. It's nah. not that light. You know, he's got a little bit of a darker locks. One one. Ground ball. Shortstop Meeker has it. Throw to first in. Plenty of time to end the inning. Well, the Miners get one here on one hit, no errors, and leave a man on base. We'll give you the Blue Sox lineup now, brought to you by the Butler Armco Credit Union. Leading off will be number 10, left fielder Tanner Murphy. Then it'll be number 23, the right fielder Joe Gunn. Three will be the third baseman, number 22, Brady Gulikowski. Batting cleanup will be the shortstop, number 19, James Meeker. Then it'll be number 41, first baseman, Patrick Ferguson. Then the DH tonight will be number seven, Rusty Ray Gonzalez. And then it's Eric Bolton in the seventh spot, catcher, wearing number nine. Damian Maglione will bat eighth and play second, wearing number 21. And Ben Crew will bat ninth, playing center field, wearing number 17. And they'll face from the University of Eastern New Mexico. That is uh, Nick DeArmond. A familiar face, somebody they saw this week. Yeah, they did. They've actually, you know, Butler's seen him twice this season. Both of DeArmond's starts in his four games pitch have come against Butler, and they've had a decent amount of success against him. He enters with a 1-1 one -one record, a 7.07 ERA, over 14 innings pitch, 10 strikeouts, 8 walks. But, you know, we look back at these two starts that he's had against the Blue Sox. The first, June 2nd, he took the loss, went five innings, allowed five earned runs on five hits, three walks four strikeouts. Next time out, a little better, got a no decision, four and a third innings pitch, three earned runs, four hits, four walks, three strikeouts, but that was back on June 13th. So a guy Butler's familiar with, and you wonder if that's really gonna help them out here today too. We, I mean, at June 13th, that's what, five days ago. They've seen him already in the past week or so. So that's something that, that these hitters are knowing. They're, uh, they remember the last time they probably faced him. So I'd say in a way for this pitching matchup today, advantage Butler because of that experience. Well, yeah, it, it, it could go both ways. It can. But um, you're right. Usually when you see a guy twice in one week, that's that's, that's very rare. For it one is. Thing. It is. And uh, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out this afternoon. Defensively for the Miners, we got Toddy's behind home plate. Ward at first, Acuna at second. Hagen at third. Callaway is the shortstop. In left field is Johnson. In center field is Norman. And in right field is Schul. Here comes Tanner Murphy to the plate. Among qualified hitters in the prospect league, he's got the best average on the Blue Sox, 326. Calvin Scott has the best overall, but he's just quite missing that qualification. He's at 387 and off today, but Murphy, a really solid start to the season. He takes a pitch outside. Murphy from North Florida. 1-0 is a bit high. Now this is a good count here, 2-0, and well, now it's 3-0 because that pitch was well low and off the plate. 
Got to like the patience of Murphy to start things off here. We've seen him kind of slide into that leadoff role a little bit more lately. Patience is a big reason why. Yeah, he watches a fastball in for a strike. That's not a surprising 3-0. Not going to see many hitters get that green light. It's it's extremely rare to see a guy swinging away 3-0. Unless it's, you know, the air manager has confidence in the hitter. 3-1. Outside, ball four. A good start for the Blue Sox. Murphy on base via the free pass. Here's Joe Gunn. Playing right field this afternoon. Calvin Scott getting a day off. Joe played oh, ball to the backstop here. A bunt attempt, and he pulls back. Pitch is well out of the zone and, and to the backstop. That allows Murphy to take second on a wild pitch. Now you don't have to bunt. Yeah, that's the bright side for Gunn. I mean, as a hitter, you've got to love that. You're just going to be swinging away now. At this point, you don't have to worry about a sacrifice play. It looked like, you know, catcher Brent Toadies there, just kind of a little concerned with having to throw to second. You see him jump up for a second before even having the ball in his hand. So it showed you how much the runner was bothering him. 1-0. Is it called strike? Yeah, you're right. He he, uh, basically, I don't know if he didn't know that he that he didn't have it or he was just trying to bluff to hold Murphy there. It's hard to second. say. It might have been it might have been either or, but either way, you know, a, a great start for the Blue Sox. You love that right there, being able to just get a run to second without the sacrifice bunt. Gun takes a curveball in the turf. He's ahead now, and time will be called as. I thought he was going to go out and have a quick word with him. It hasn't been a clean start. He hasn't really hit the zone much at all. No. I mean, he's only two batters, but he's only thrown one sh uh, two, two strikes total in this game. Uh, through, you know, and, and, and one of them was a get-me-over strike on a 3-0 pitch. Exactly. You mentioned that it was a 3-0 count to Murphy to lead things off. Not an ideal way to start the game. But, uh, yeah, and since then, you look at it, it's a 2-1 count now. The runner at second, too. So not a great start for DeArmond. Here's the pitch. Yeah, line drive, base hit. This should tie the game. Murphy's coming around third. He's going to score. Joe Gunn's got himself an RBI single, and it takes two batters, and the Blue Sox have tied the game at one. I love that resiliency. It's what we just talked about. It's huge for Gunn. It could have been a runner at second with one out, but because of that wild pitch, instead you've got no outs in the tied ball game instead. So nice break for the Blue Sox, and they took advantage of it right there. Well, here's Gulikowski, the third baseman this afternoon. Catcher last night. Here's the pitch. It's slow. He went one for three last night, too. Yeah, you mentioned he caught. He, he's been a designated hitter, kind of bouncing around. You ask a lot of these guys, you hope that some of them can play the infield corners if they also play outfield, too. But Dearmond now. De Dearmond behind all three hitters he's faced to this point. Yeah, and that's what's going to hurt you. You can't throw those first pitch strikes. That's really going to be a thorn in your own side. Runner takes off. Pitch is a ball. Throw down is not going to be in time. As Gunn snags second. The, the throw from Ty is a little high. I don't think it would have mattered. I think he was there anyway. Yeah, I think I'm with you too. That was a little bit high. Gunn had a, had a good jump on that one. Got his third stolen base of the season there. So nice work on that. Now, Gulikowski uh, in a good spot here, 2-0. Here's the pitch. He takes a big cut, but will foul it out of the stadium. Blue Sox doing a good job just getting runners on and into scoring position immediately. Some of it by luck, some of them by their own doing. But it's great to see that from the top of the order here, setting the table for these, these big hitters coming up. Yeah, Meeker is on deck. Here's the pitch from Dearman. It is hit out into left field. That should be playable towards the line. And making the catch is Johnson for the first out. A little late on that swing. It ends up popping it out the left. A little bit. Looked like that was a pitch he kind of liked, but as you said, just a little late on it and couldn't get enough wind. We're feeling the breeze right now, but obviously it wasn't enough to push that ball and make it a tough play out and left. But it just missed that one a little bit. Well, here's James Meeker. Shortstop for the Blue Sox, also a relief pitcher. 
through four innings the other night. Pitch is low, throw down to third, and they are going to get Gunn. A nice throw from Toddies. A 9-5 caught stealing for the second out. Eventful box for Joe Gunn in the first inning. The single, the RBI, a stolen base, and then caught stealing. But I love the aggressiveness, but eh, tough to... I, I don't like it whenever you have a runner on second. That's what I out. was thinking, too. You like to see players sometimes being aggressive. I don't think that was the right time. Meeker fans of the curveball. He's down 0-2. Think about the timing of that stolen base. This is only the first inning, but this is something that we may be circling later in the game. We say, oh, what if this happened? Oh, hard hit liner, but foul down the third base line. Yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunate. I guess if you get to, the, the reward is a fly ball gets him in. But mm -hmm. You think there's only one out, too. Yeah. So, that yeah, like you said, that fly ball, the sacrifice fly brings him in. But it's, it's always risky taking third. Third ball misses away. Yeah, it's just, yeah, that's it's not as far of a throw for yeah. the catcher. And, and i got to give Toddy's credit. His throw to second wasn't very good, but his throw to third was right on the Much money. Much better. One, two, and that is a line drive to the left that will get down. That would have scored a run. That's, yeah, we're playing that what if game now, yeah. <laughs> Meeker's on board with a single for Ferguson. Meeker now batting the first baseman number 41. Patrick Ferguson. Talk about count. Let's see how much power Ferguson has. Eight home runs on the season, but he's done a great job at hitting to the opposite field a little bit too lately and just getting on base. He's brought his average up to 286. You know, the last time you and I were on the broadcast, yeah. we talked about strike. There's too many strikeouts, and that average isn't where it should be, but he's improved a lot as a hitter already through the course of the summer. Yeah, he had a single last night, but he also was on the other end. He had three strikeouts. He did. But, but, yeah, that's where you're going to get from it a guy like him right now. Mm -hmm. He's only, a fr you know, a barely played as a freshman at Kent State. He's got some time before he's going to, you know, probably mature as a hitter. And that's why he's here this summer. Exactly. To mature as a hitter, too. And he takes a big cut, comes up empty, and it uh, looked like a changeup from Dearmond, who's out in front of it. Yeah, you're exactly right, though. That's why you're here right now. You didn't, he didn't play a ton as a, as a freshman, so come here to Butler and be a regular this season. We've only seen him miss a few games just for getting the day off or something, but he's getting plenty of at-bats. That's what you want for these young guys. 1-1. One, one. Ball hit well to center field, but that'll hold up for Norman, who makes the catch to end the inning. One run comes across on two hits. No errors, and one man left on base. We'll go to the second. It is 1-1. One, one. Second inning here in Butler, it's 1-1. Blue Sox get one last inning, but uh, unfortunately kind of botched one out there as well. Couldn't get another one. Couldn't get the other one uh, after Gunn was uh, thrown out trying to steal third. They don't have that when you're an aggressive team like the Blue Sox are. They've stolen probably more bases than anybody in the league. 45 after yeah. that one by Gunn. Yeah, they're, they're probably, they got to be the top, one of the top teams in the league. I think Danville has more, but that's the only one. Pitches a ball to Acuna, it makes it 2-0. and oh. Acuna is uh, an interesting story. I believe he's from, um, I want to get it right. So gonna, he's from uh, Venezuela. The ball's popped up. 
And coming in is Murphy to make the catch. Going away. Ice, you only got to use two pitches there to retire Acuna. You had the first one he took from the ball, but then swinging and lofted that one to left. So pitch count's a huge thing in this game. It, it's You want to test out your stars as much as you can. You'd like for them to go as deep as possible. You also can't wear them out. Yeah, and that's uh, Acuna. I was just saying, he's from Venezuela. He's one of the few international players in the prospect league. Um, of course, we have a kid from no, Canada. Canada. I don't know if that counts or not. There. That's, uh, that's quite like, international. That's, uh, that's our, little, that's our uh, young, younger brothers of the north. And that ball is lined to right. That's going to get down. And Toddy's is around second. He will hold around first. He's heading for second. He's going to hold up there with a no, one out double. Number 12, Cody I like the first pitch there. He just ripped it. Yeah, he did. And went to the opposite field, kind of just poking that one out there. Not the hardest hit ball, but lots of real estate. We saw it. Rolling a bit, you just buy yourself some more time. He gets in there, like you said, with that one-out double. That brings up Callaway, who was the only guy for West Virginia who did not reach base last night. He did not, yeah. but you know, a lot went right for them in that one. That was the 12-6 the win. And Miners can hit, too. This is a really strong hitting team. Three of their five hitters are in the top five in the prospect league in batting average. Yeah, and yeah. It's led by Norman, but it, it's pretty incredible what they can do overall. Yeah, Mitchell's right there. Mm -hmm. He's third. And then Shul. Or no, probably probably. He Gonzalez. doesn't qualify. Yeah. Gonzalez is fifth with that 364 average. Hard hit grounder. Diving play by Golikowski. Throw across is going to be way too high. And thankfully it hit off the net and came back. I would consider that to be a hit, I'd say. Yeah, because, no, yeah, I mean, that was a tough play. It is. That's one of those ones where he probably, sh uh, it's, it's hard. It's maybe set it, maybe Fed has set his feet a little bit more there. He kind of rushed that throw, and that's why it was way over the head of Ferguson. He had no chance. Exactly. That's that's not on Ferguson at all. That's a tough play. It was a bad throw. But, you know, this is the thing I keep seeing with this Butler infield. They do a great job of keeping balls in front of them. It's when it comes to throwing yeah. that issues start up. Yeah, mm. Gulikow, that throw was just a little bit. Well, not a little bit. It was wild. Yeah, but it was. Um, thankfully, like I said, it hit off the net. Now a double play ball. You get a ground ball. You get out of here. It keeps that in play. And if that ball goes out into left field, I, I'm going to say Toddy's is probably in. So he saved the run at least on that and didn't get bit too bad by the error. Or not the error, the overthrow. Mm -hmm. And here is Johnson. It's an 0-1 count. And then pitches outside. It'll even it up. It looks like the ruling is a base hit on that one. As, as you said, by the time he was throwing, it was going to be a tough play, even if the ball had gotten there. So I'm fine with that ruling. Yeah, I am too. I, I think the only way you call that an error is if the ball gets away and I agree. the runners move up. That ball's popped into center field. Ben Carew coming in, makes the catch. They're going to throw the, they're gonna put the runner in motion, and he's going to come in to score. I didn't think he, they would send him, but they did. And he's in. That's good aggressive base running by Toddy's. And he's going to score to make it 2-1. to one. And, you know, Carew looked like he was set up for the throw there. It just wasn't a great throw coming in. Yeah, it was a little short. It was. So it's not like he wasn't expecting and he just, you know, just casually tossed it in. It just the throw wasn't there. So good decision by Toddy's to tag up and score. West Virginia is always very aggressive on the bases, kind of like what the Blue Sox strive to be. And uh, that's a case where it paid off there. For the Blue Sox, the last thing, it did not pay off. Liner right to Meeker to end the top of the second. One run comes in on two hits. Uh, no errors and one left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the second with West Virginia ahead, two to one.
Ray Gonzalez leads it off here in the bottom half of the second inning. The Blue Sox are trailing two to one. Uh, so far, the Miners have had good situational hitting, and they've Man. had uh, good aggressive base running that's worked out for them. Blue Sox, good hitting. Uh, one base run, running uh, aggressive play that, it, that kind of blew up in their face. It kind of did. It's like you said. You talked about how this is kind of what Butler wants to do. They want to be aggressive on the base paths like West Virginia was. And, I mean, that's why they won last year, too. That's something you look back at. You want to mimic a strategy like that. Well, Ray Gonzalez takes outside. One and one is the count on number seven of the Blue Sox. Designated hitter this afternoon. Could see him on the mound, too, at some point. He's not been a bad pitcher for us at times when we've needed with our bullpen being a little thin at the moment. It is. With three guys being uh, drafted and uh, it's just, uh, it's tough to overcome. And you look at using four relievers last night too. That, that didn't help at all. The one two is a pitch outside. Yeah, we use, yeah, yeah. So you kind of hope that maybe there's a chance to sign someone here pretty soon. Yeah. Just add someone on just I, for. Uh, I got to give Cody and, and Josh credit. Mm -hmm. They've been, uh, they already signed one in uh, um, Doherty. He came in yesterday. But but um, they're, they're, they're trying. It's just hard at this it time is. of the year. Whenever you get decimated like that by the draft, mm -hmm. it's really hard to get uh, uh, players <laughs> this time of the year. Most guys are already placed. And so you just got to. Do your best work your magic. I know uh, Cody said yesterday he's e emailed uh, a, a whole bunch of coaches just trying to find somebody mm -hmm. to see if he can get some pitching pitches away to Gonzalez. That makes it 3-2. It's one of those things, too. It's just I'm sure you're, if you're Cody Harold, you're, you're proud of guys for making the draft. But at the same time, you're like, oh, geez, they're just picking them off of our team at this point. <laughs> Oh, pitches a called strike three on the outside corner. Gonzalez didn't like it, but he'll have to head back to the dugout. First K for Dearman. Dearman. It was tough to say on that. It looked like it might have gone on the outside edge, but from the home plate umpires, it looked like it was right there. So Gonzalez down looking. That's the only view that matters. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, whether you like it or not, at the end of the day, you, you can only argue so much because he's the one running the show. Bolton will take a pitch right there for a called strike. Pitches in there for a called strike, 0 oh and 2. And Bolton will strike out on a curveball low. Back to back K's for. Dearman. Kind of seeing him get into his game plan now. That first inning, a lot of first pitch balls. Look at these first two at bats. Gets ahead of these guys. A three pitch strikeout to Bolton there. Got Gonzalez looking. Getting those first pitch strikes is a big, big deal for starting pitchers. Yeah, that was that was definitely the issue that helped the Blue Sox in the first inning. Mm -hmm. Right now, he is seemed to have locked in a little bit. And he gets his third straight first pitch strike. Now in the Maglione, had a triple last night and a double. A good night at the plate, and now it's 0-2. Yeah, he was the only hitter last night with two hits for the Blue Sox. Did score six runs, but you know, only one with two hits. Looking to continue that today. But yeah, we talk about you know getting down these counts. you got to wonder if Butler's going to get more aggressive early on on these first pitches thrown going forward. 0-2, oh, oh, well, that was a curveball way outside. Maglione will run it out, but he will be thrown out by Toddies to end the inning. And Blue Sox, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Three strikeouts in the inning. We'll go to the third. It is 2-1 West Virginia.
Stetson Mitchell leads off here in the top of the third inning with the West Virginia Miners leading two to one. He takes the call to strike. He walked and then later scored in the first inning. Clinging Smith shakes off the side, comes home and bounces a curveball in. Clinging Smith in both innings so far has retired the leadoff hitter, but then both times the second batter of the inning has come around to get on base and score. So something to watch here in this inning. Mitchell takes high. A few times where he's just flying open. He's just not. That one there. Just not, he didn't get the delivery he wanted. Uh, missing the release point. 2-1, that's a good one there. Good fastball, got it by him. 41st pitch of the day there for Klingensmith. So as we start the third, a little higher than he might like, but he's still in a solid spot to get some decent work here if he can, can kind of continue at this rate or get a quicker inning here pretty soon. Well, fastball in there for a called strike three. Mitchell knew it, he started heading right back to the dugout. That's a good, that's a tough guy to get out of. You said he's one of the top five guys in the, in the league. Yeah, third best average in a prospect league, so that's a great strikeout looking now at that. His reward is the number one guy, Norman. <laughs> Austin he struck, Norman, yeah, yeah. struck him out the first time. First pitch, chopper. That's a fair ball to Maglione. Flipped to Ferguson, two away. And you look at the three strikeouts in this game for Klingensmith. It's first, second, and third hitters. Some of the toughest ones in this order. So that's a good sign he's been able to retire them. You know, the only one he's allowed to reach in six plate appearances was Mitchell, did score in that first, but make a nice work of that top of the order so far. Yeah, here's Ward. RBI single, like you said, not a hard hit ball, but it hit the base and then allowed it to carry him out into center field in his first plate appearance. Takes a called strike. Clayton Smith seems to be working quickly and efficiently here. And he's right there again with a fastball for a strike. So, word in the hole. Kind of doing what his mound opponent did in the previous thing. Obviously, not as many strikeouts so far, but you look at just getting in there, strike one, strike two, getting right back up and going again. And the 0-2 is upstairs. That's not a bad pitch given the uh, count. But Ward, pretty good hitter. Not going to chase things like that. No, no. A little too high. About shoulder high. One, two. Oh, he almost got him to chase a breaking ball. That's some late life, but able to hold off. That, that'll drive you nuts as a pitcher. You throw a good breaking ball like that, and he, he acts like he's going to. Now he pops it into right center. Carew gives away to Gunn, and hand, Gunn has it to end the inning. One, two, three, go the West Virginia Miners in the top of the third. We'll go to the bottom half. Miners leading two to one. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Ready to go here in the third inning with the Blue Sox trailing two to one. But a clean inning by Klingen Smith, and now they're trying to break a strikeout streak here of Dearman, who Dearman, I should say, he has a capital A. <laughs> um, he uh, struck out the side last inning. Carew bunts, 
well, shows button and Pitt pulls it back for a ball. Crew from uh, Wisconsin. That's where they're hosting the, U the U.S. Open up there in That's right. Wisconsin. That's right. That's this weekend. It's been tough to keep up with that. Yeah, there's a hard hit ball to right field, tailing towards the line. That is a fair ball. And that is going to be uh, at least two. And Carew will stop. The, what? They called that a foul ball? you got to be kidding me. No way. It looked like that one got just to the left of the line. If you're looking at it from home plate, hard to say. I mean, that's on you know, we'll have to check later on our YouTube broadcast well, later. I'll tell you what, Forbes is giving it to the umpire out there right now. He can't believe they called that a foul ball. Even That would have been three. Yeah. This is the second night in a row that's happened. And you saw Carew rounding second kind of look. That was a fair, that, that's unbelievable. <laughs> they robbed the kid of a triple. Nice job out there. Swing and a miss by Carew. He's down one and two. That's unbelievable. That's so poor. It's one of those issues. It was by a foot and a half. It was. It's one of those issues in the league. You kind of wonder with the limited umpires if that's really but an he, issue. But he was right there. He was. He was. He was right on it, and he called it a foul ball. It's ridiculous. That's the same guy we had problems with the other night at the plate. The one that was uh, that uh, made made the catcher go out and talk to Meeker. Mm -hmm. Ugh. He's a vendetta against us or something. I don't know. Maybe he's just maybe he's just like a regular umpire. Ball sinking into center field and he'll end up with a single. So Carew gets on anyway, but he would have at least had three if they would have ruled that. Oh, single by number 17, ben it's frustrating. Uh, you know what, though? Give credit to Carew for getting back into the batter's box and being able to settle himself down. Because so often you see some guys, you see it from pitchers, they give up runs on the mound. They can be rattled, and you can see almost an inning just you know, fall apart. But it's not, it can go the same way for a hitter. You get robbed of a base hit there. But Carew did a great job settling down, getting that bloop single. And he's yeah. still aboard nonetheless. He's a solid threat on the base paths too this season. Four stolen bases for the outfielder. Yeah. Well, yeah, good job by Crew throw over and they almost got him. But Ward's tag a little late. Pichai snap throw, and Carew is back, barely. Oh, boy, they almost got him. I think he might have hurt himself. Or at least, uh, well, no, it looks all right. But he's just shaking up yeah, for a moment. Sometimes yeah. that awkward, maybe his hand twisted something. Yeah. His hand come in pretty, uh, I think he might have, like, punched it against the base as he was coming through. But he <laughs> seems to be all right. And the 2-0. Oh, Murphy hits one well to left field. Going back to the wall and making the catch right by the warning track, right by the wall is Johnson. Carew alertly gets back to first. A loud out by Murphy in left field. Starting to feel that breeze right behind us, right after he hit. I kept wondering if that's going to get out there in time. That might carry it out, but not enough wind on that ball. Hit it well, just not quite deep enough. It didn't get any help. And we talk about a lot of other ballparks that's out of here, but it's 347 to that left field foul pole. Uh, probably a little bit more as you move into left center, so you're not going to get any cheap shot home runs at this park. Throw over to first. No, it gets away. Crew's going to be able to get the second on this, and I would keep him going, keep him going. He's had the third, and he will be there with, that's where he should be anyway, but he's there now, a two-base error by the pitcher, Dearman. <laughs> not quite the way you draw it up, but... And nonetheless, Ben Carew ends up at third base. It's amazing how things like that work out. Yeah, he would have scored already on that fly ball by Murphy, but he's there now, so let's let's get him in here and get him rewarded for uh, some good hustle there. Throw from Dearman way wide, and no chance for Ward. One of those things that makes you wonder if karma is real in this life. Well, we're going to find out here. Gun fouls the ball out of play. Out of the stadium. 
That's as goofy as it gets, Jaron. You have a ball, you should have had a triple down the line. Mm -hmm. You get a single instead, end up at third on a two-base throwing error. Mm -hmm. That's as goofy as it gets. I mean, we all make mistakes, but that was that was a pretty poor one by our umpire. Oh, no, that ball's propped up on the infield. Hagen's got it for the second out. Now Foul territory. <laughs> that, that's a rough one there. Gunn kind of knew he's I didn't foul that hard enough or far enough foul. Yeah, he just did not get enough on that one. And he really paid the price for that one. Yeah, it's just a very weakly hit lofty fly ball. Now uh, Gulikowski fouls one high up over top of the lights out of play. Runner at third, uh, West Virginia up 2-1, so uh, Gulikowski base hit will tie it. Gulikowski takes a curveball away. Seeing his average drop a little bit, still hitting 300 though. Fantastic start to the season. We saw himself near those 400s, but still doing pretty well. Ball hit well to left field, tailing, tailing, and we'll go foul. And you know what, it really hurt about that. You see that went over the fence and left too. That yeah. stays fair, that's out of here. Yeah, he almost hooked it around the pole, but he missed it by about five feet. Boy, that was close though. It's hard to tell with some balls hit on that direction, especially you move to left center with the white advertisements out there, but that one, you could see exactly where that was going with the green fence and just barely foul. But you could, and right where we are, we're right on this left field line, so we saw that tailing a ton. But yeah. Boy, he had the distance. I'll tell you what, I usually say left hitters have the advantage, but the way the wind's blowing today, right handers have an advantage. I'm too. with you. Pitch high, two and two. Because um, it's blowing straight to left field. If you hit it to left, you're going to get some help. Yeah. You know, but in right field, that's when you got to wonder if that ball is going to be kept in play. Now it seems to be switching and blowing in a bit. Now Golikowski strikes out to end the inning. Well, the Blue Sox leave a man at third. We'll go to the fourth with West Virginia head two to watch. John Hagen leads off the fourth for the West Virginia Miners, who lead 2-1. Mike Klingensmith gets him to foul one out of play. Klingensmith has uh, retired five in a row and uh, had his first 1-2-3 inning of the game last inning. Solid job, got ahead of everybody, and now he's ahead 0-2 here. Well, hits the old Newbrook building behind us. I believe we're the only game in town in the Prospect League right now. I believe so right now. I think we got a few ones coming later. But yeah, 3 o'clock. 
uh, because of the time zone difference for some yeah. of the games too. But yeah, I no, think that's true. Yeah, half the teams are in the Central Time Zone. That's right. O2 so is high. Yeah, you got West Virginia, Chillicothe, Kokomo, Butler, and maybe Lafayette. Might be close. I think it's six in one time zone and four in the other. Because uh, Terre Haute. funny ratio there. Yeah, Terre Haute is in the, in the central. Um, uh, Danville is, mm -hmm. uh, Quincy is, and, and Springfield is. There you go. 2-2, two, two. hard hit ball to left field. That ball is still going, and that ball is over the fence. A solo homer for Hagen. I told you about that win, and that was a win-aided home run there. You watch out in left field, too, where those trees are. I'm not sure how well you can see it on YouTube right now, but you just you can see them moving to that left pretty well. You see the flag pulling center, pushing heavy left. Again, didn't get all of that one, but you know, Goldilocks got just enough on it to carry it out of here. Yeah, his no, forge was just right. <laughs> Just right. Just right on that one. Okay, here's Acuna. 53rd pitch of the day there, by the way, from Klingon Smith on the hill. So, yeah, a, a bounce back with a good 30. Obviously, a tough start to this one, but in a solid spot overall for pitches. Yeah, Acuna takes a strike. 3 1 now, Miners. They have four hits, Blue Sox have three. One error for West Virginia, none for the Blue Sox. Hard hit ball, base hit out in the left field. Kuna like Matata on that yeah. one, hit that real good, <laughs> squared that up, got that right in that gap between third and short. Uh, I'll tell you, he, he, he chased a high fastball there because he, he was up. Uh, his hands are way up on that swing, and he still muscled it out there. It was a little high. He said, no worries, though, and just he squared it up perfect like that, you know, and got on board. Now he's starting to get a little worried here. Not a lot of pitches thrown in the inning, but, you know, a couple big hits here. And not, not like they were tough balls to for anyone. It was like a tough play for him. Oh, this is a chance for possibly a double play. Uh, nope, Acuna gets back, but a bunt attempt going to arrive for Toddy's. Last thing you want to see if you're taught is seeing your bunt go up in the air. You keep thinking, get down, get down. Because that's the, yeah, like you said, waste of an ad bat in a lot of ways. But bunting is a little tougher than it looks to some people. Yeah. yeah. Some people might assume that's pretty easy. Not the case at all. It's extremely hard. <laughs> it's it one is. of the hardest things you could do in a, in, uh, for baseball. It's, it's an art. Proper. It's an art it in is. a lot of ways. If you can, if, here's the thing too with pitchers. If you are able to bunt and you can't do anything else, I am completely fine with that. And you look at the National League, Major League Baseball, some other levels where pitchers have to hit. If you can bunt but you can't swing the bat, I'm fine. I'm completely fine with that because nine times out of ten, I mean, that's all that's really going to be asked of you. You're not going to be yeah. expected to get an RBI double. Pitches low. Yeah, You're, yeah. There's a few guys in the that can pitch or that or that pitch that can hit, mm -hmm. but they're not exactly um, abundant. Nah, nah. Very valuable though if you have one. Klingon Smith checks first a couple times, comes home. Acuna with a good lead swing and a miss from Callaway. He's down one and two. You know, Pesac battle here. Gannon versus IUP. Might have seen each other at some point in the springtime. Cer almost certainly, or the way that division is. But yeah, you like seeing that local town too. One, two, win there for a called strike three. A delayed called strike three from Mr. Proverb, but we'll we'll take it. In there, nonetheless, delay or no delay, like you said. But fourth strike out of the day for Klingon Smith. As like we've seen, his fastball has looked really good today. It's those breaking balls that just missing a little bit and not getting hitters to bite on them. I like what I'm seeing from his fastball today. Here's Johnson. Uh, pitches upstairs to him. He uh, sacrificed fly to center field his first time up. Two away here and a runner on first. One run in on a solo homer to left. And the pitch popped out of play. That sacrifice fly brought in the second run of the day for the Miners. They're at three right now. Big interesting set for Butler. Five and one when they can hold their opponents to four runs or less this season. So that's just, it's one of those little things. You like to hit and drive in five or more. That's usually a good thing for the college level, but you hold your opponent to less than that. It's a big deal. Another foul ball by Johnson. Well, they can keep him at four. 
I think you can work with that. Yeah, In a three I run ball game. Yeah, you can work with that. I think the Blue Sox have enough offense I to come too. back. It's w the problem is when things happen like last night where it gets to twelve. Yeah. To four. You're not gonna win many now. of those. A little grounder pass to Divan Gulakowski out into left field. Two out single puts two men aboard. Third hit of the nice. inning, two for the Miners. Starting to get a good feel for this one. You know, you came into this inning with three hits on the game and <laughs> already matched that in this inning alone. So you kind of wonder if the bats are just kind of starting to wake up now. Well, here's the leadoff man. Shoal, he's 0 for 2 to this point. And he's going to foul the first pitch into the net. Well, another ball fouled away. Then. <laughs> Aaron the fans can, yeah. not our car, but <laughs> yeah, it looks like it hit one anyway. Yeah. Not our car. Well, the tough thing about here is if you don't get a good parking spot early, you know, you might be in danger of those foul balls. Yeah, some people complain about that extended netting in the major league level. I wonder if, you know, some people wouldn't, wouldn't mind it a little bit higher here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because of stuff like that, like the cars. <laughs> Pitch outside, two, and one and two. I beg your pardon. It, yeah, that's a, that's funny. And also, you got the um, um, uh, big crowd last night for fireworks. We yeah, close to a thousand. Oh yeah, that's whenever the cars are really in danger. You swing and a miss here, and <laughs> Bolton tags him on the back to end the inning. All right, so one run comes in for West Virginia on three hits, no errors, and two men left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth with the Miners ahead, four to one. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesocks.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox. Speaker is the leadoff hitter here in the fourth inning. Blue Sox are trailing four to one. Looking to get a run back here, maybe two. Yeah. Middle of the order. You know, it, it's the early storyline of the game, but you kind of wonder about some of these missed chances for the Blue Sox. As, takes a strike. as you, you look back at that first inning, Joe Gunn getting thrown out at third, plant kind of playing with fires. We talked about he stole second. He, did, he brought in the run, the RBI single, but that really hurt. Little roller that will go foul up the first base line. And then of course last inning too, you know, you had Ben Carew nearly reaching with the leadoff triple, still reached with a leadoff single, but and got the third eventually, but the Blue Sox kind of squandered him. You know, next three batters retired in order. So that's the storyline of the game. Missed chances so far. It's something they've got to cash in on going yeah. forward. Yeah, if he gets on the triple, that fly ball to center field by or to left field by Murphy would mm -hmm. got him in. But after that, he did. They did have Gunn and Gulikowski yep. after the error by the pitcher. Neither one of them could uh, 
Get him in. Oh, jeez, oh, man. Foul ball into the Blue Sox dugout. I hope everybody was paying attention. Based on Meeker's reaction, it looked like it, it didn't hit anyone. It looked like it sounded like it hit a fence or something on the way. So Good. looks like everyone's all right there. Now the 0-2 is a bouncer. Good block. We despite those problems, the Blue Sox only a two-run game, like we're talking about. And a little liner to center. That'll get down for a single. Gets in front of Norman. No chance for him, but we'll take it. Third time in this game. You know, it's only the fourth now, but third time that a leadoff hitter has reached for the Blue Sox. So it's a great way to start. You know, first inning at work. You know, no one reaching the second, but you know, last inning nearly able to bring it in. So good thing to start, especially when you got someone like Ferguson to play with the power potential. One swing of the bat, it's a tie ball game. Well, yeah. Well, no, it'd be a, it's 4-1 now. My apologies. It still says 3-1 out there. Is that so? All right, swing and a miss from Ferguson. And he flew out the center field his first time up. The 0-1 is a curveball that's in there for a called strike. Oh, now he's in danger here. He's a K candidate. He is, and he laid off that curveball. We know that's not his favorite pitch to feast on either. So hoping fastball here, but in a two-strike situation, hard to say what he's going to get. 0-2, he hits a fastball that was about as high as the shoe tops. He'd have to have a good drive on that one on, in honor of the final day of the U.S. Open. Yeah. He'd have to get a good hook on that out here. He would have had to pull a nine iron out of his yeah. bag to get to get to that ball. One, two. Another one to the backstop. That will allow Meager to move up. Wild pitch. Second wild pitch of the day as well for a DRM and so yeah, he's only given up a run so far but we've seen he can be a little wild he, he can be a little erratic he also threw a ball into the corner for a two base error <laughs> he did he's living dangerously he is so that's the thing you keep thinking the Blue Sox if they just keep putting guys on they're going to get more chances and DRM is going to make mistakes it's been proven already the 2-2 two -two. ooh just inside. I thought he was going to get rung up there, but we'll take it. Look a little bit low? It broke just a little bit at the end there, but you're right. It was pretty close at first. All right, so a 3-2 count. Meeker at second. And, well, we're going to wait here. Dierman stares out first. Here's the pitch. Ferguson takes outside ball four. Two men on, nobody out. Great patience by Ferguson on yeah. that at bat. It's, it's what we keep talking about. Then too, is he's really grown in this short season so far as a hitter. Whereas I know the strikeouts are still there, but it's these productive at bats, these walks after it was an 0-2 count, and it's these at bats where we see him hitting to the opposite field. He's done a great job in the last couple of weeks improving his all-around game at the plate. It was a good at bat, very good at bat. You love seeing that, even if you, maybe if you don't always draw the walk, but you love seeing guys work out of the 0-2 count and force the pitcher to throw more pitches, because then you're at least wearing them down a little bit, even if you're still retired. But in that case, Ferguson at least is able to reach base, too, so that's just the cherry on top. First pitch is low to Gonzalez. Called out on strikes. His first time of a tough 3-2 uh, ring up. Fastball is right there for strike evens the count of one apiece. He talked about that 3-2 ring up where he went down looking in a second. You like seeing uh, the patience sometimes, but you can only be so patient with that bats, and he was caught looking way back in the second inning. And the 1-1. One -one. Yeah, that's a good take there. That dipped out of the zone. Started out middle of his in the middle of the strike zone, just took off for the seller. And two one. Foul ball straight back. 
Now we keep extending these at bats here against the Armin. 65th pitch of the game right there was fouled back. Got to keep forcing the throw. You know, you, you extend at bats with foul balls like that. Do what you can. Hope he starts having to throw some weaker stuff or keeps throwing fastballs and you can just time one of them up eventually. And Gonzalez down on strikes, fastball away. Good pitch from Dearmon. And that will be the first out of the inning. Just a little bit low. Gonzalez looked like he, he liked it, just a little bit late swinging that one. It was low in the strike zone, but you you saw the way Gonzalez approached it. He could have he could have made contact, but that just didn't time it right at all. Well, here is Bolton. He's 0 for 1, struck out, swinging in the second inning. Take the ball. And we mentioned coming in today, he had that 061 average, so looking to try and force that back up a little bit. To, yeah, as you mentioned, the strikeout in the second. Hoping for a productive at bat here with one out. Hard hit grounder, diving, stopped by the shortstop. They got one there, on to first, he'll beat it out. Oh my goodness, Callaway takes away a base hit and also in the process gets the middleman out. Now batting number 21, the second base. Yeah, that's big. Getting the, the, uh, the runner at second, Ferguson out. Yeah, wanted the double play, obviously, but give credit to Bolton for hustling that one out. But the good news for the Blue Sox is, you know, Meeker is at third. He wasn't retired, so 90 feet away from scoring, even with two outs, you'd rather have the runner at third than at second in this case. So, I mean, again, I'm not saying you're. you're fine with Ferguson being out. It would be much better to have two in scoring position, but avoided a real catastrophe there. Well, Maglione with a runner at third. Actually, runners on the corners takes a called strike. Yeah, this is a situation here where you know, you're down 4-1, and you got to start chipping away. Mm -hmm. You get deeper and deeper into this or game, I'm sorry, 3-1, three, three one, three one, not 4-1. What did I say? 3? Yeah, 3-1. Three 3-1 one. Three one now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if you if you keep, uh, you know, you got to get a run back here eventually. So... And um, this would be a good time to do it. Well, hard hit grounder, pass to Kuna at second. That will get a run in. Bolton's going to round second and head for third. Here's the throw. He slides in safely. Maglione with an RBI single, cuts the lead to one. Just what you talked about, got to start cutting into it, and that RBI single, that does some damage, you know? You had one run in, runner to the corners again now, but good piece of hitting by Magley, and shot that up the middle, and a big bounce back for him. We talked about it in that second inning, that was just a, a really bad at-bat for him. You know, the three-pitch strikeout, very bad swing for the third pitch, and you know, I think that's something you think about as a, a, as a hitter, you know, it's been two innings since you hit, you're back up there again, and two outs again, you got a, a situation to do some damage, so. Good bounce back at bat all around for Maglione. 3-2 yeah, game. Yeah, with a, a fake. You know, fake the third, look at first. That's a common move in uh, college baseball. Only get five of those a game at the college level. Not sure if that changes in the prospect league. Uh, yeah, well they use the, basically we use NCAA rules. So okay. I don't think you get any of those in professional baseball anymore. No, none at all. They're boxed at the uh, professional level, but at, the, at least the Division One level, I'm aware, they do. They allow five first to third or third to first moves in a game. So mm. if we're playing by that, he's got four more left today. Hopefully he doesn't use all his chips here. 1-0, pitch outside. So... Carew in a good spot here. Bolton, the tying run at third and a 2-0 count. Maglione's got some speed at first. If he can get one into the gap and they rule it fair, it will be uh, uh, a... <laughs> it, it, it could it's be a big a, one a, if. A That's a big one yeah, if. That one early is ridiculous. There's a line drive to center. It's hanging up, going for a diving catch out there. There's Norman to end the inning. Oh, he stole it away. And that'll, well, that's the... 
Hey, that's about as good as you can do out there in center field. That's risky, too. That ball gets by him. That might bring, that yeah. might clear the bases. That yeah. <laughs> might clear the bases. Do get one back. And uh, two hits. No errors. And two men left on base. We'll go to the fifth with the Miners ahead three to two. Ready to go here in the fifth inning. Mitchell, the DH, leads off and takes a high fastball. Blue Sox down 3-2, but they're right in it. Uh, got a run back last inning. Ball hit the left field. Murphy drifting towards the line. And fair territory will make the catch for the first out. Now batting number seven, the center fielder, Austin Nolan. It's good start for Klingensmith here. Joel, so far, it's a bit, of, a bit about missed opportunities for Butler, but at the same time, th they're one hit away from tying it up. They are, and Maglione coming through with that two-out single to drive in the second round of the game for the Blue Sox was a big deal for them. As we talked about all the missed opportunities, that's one where you kind of wonder, oh, they had some chances. Might have blown it, but you got one last inning. It's, it's tough to drive every runner in in a game. Well, I've bolted into the gap, but I got to give crew credit. He got over there quickly, cuts it off, holds him to a one out single. Norman on base for the first time. And it's going to be hard to keep him no, off the bases today. Uh, yeah, one for three on the day now. First hit right there. So it's kind of one of those ones you take that when you say, you know, I'm not going to get him every time. But sometimes you do. You it's it's tough holding down those tough hitters sometimes. But it's a in a game of baseball where we we credit the players that are successful three times out of ten. Yeah. You know sometimes you do get those those golden sombrero like days. You know or over over four days. Well, Dan Ward is one for two. He's ready to go. He'll take a pitch up above the letters. The 1-0 runner takes off. It's a hit and run. It's right at Gubikowski, and they got a double play to end the inning. That couldn't have worked out any better for the Blue Sox. I've been talking to Pat in between innings about how bad our luck is. We get some good luck there. Yeah, the attempted hit and run, but like you said, the uh, hit and run does not quite work so well there. A, a nice e inning-ending double play for the Blue Sox. Well, we'll go to the bottom of the fifth. West Virginia three, Butler two.
Cannon Murphy ready to go here in the fifth. Blue Sox down 3-2, ball hit to right center. It'll hold up a while, and making the catch out there is the right fielder, Scholl, for the first out. Talked about it earlier because of how, you know, we've seen DeArmond getting ahead of the hitters a little bit. Getting There's a couple strikes in there pretty early on because they've been taking them, so we kind of wonder if they're going to get more aggressive. Murphy, of course aggressive. That was the first pitch of that at bat, but hit a little too high. I think maybe Dearman might be uh, maybe something wrong. With him. Goddard comes out of the dugout to see if he's all right. This is not a normal mound visit. No, so it, it does kind of make you wonder a little bit if you know maybe he's just shaking up. It's not like anyone's on base either, so that's why it is a little more surprising right now. Looks like he's okay though. Yeah, he's going to walk around a bit. There was some throwing out there in the bullpen, though, for the Miners. The right-hander, Art Salazar Jr., is tossing around. So you kind of wonder maybe a move is coming. The pitch count isn't awful for the Armit either. Gun shows bunt, pulls it back, takes a called strike. Yeah, that was just his 76th pitch there, too. So, again, he's only made two starts of the season, so maybe that's you don't want to stretch him out too much in them. He's a reliever in college, I know that much. Oh, gun, just can't lay off the breaking curve ball that was down below the knees, well below the knees, it actually bounced in. Yeah, below the knees, a little generous <laughs> for how, how how much that really sank in there. The 0-2, gun takes a pitch for a called strike three. Now batting number 22, third baseman Brady, and Gunn will head back to the dugout. Brings up Gulakowski, 0 for 2, a fly out and a strikeout. First pitch bounces in. And another bouncer. You know, the last thing you want to do if you're the Blue Sox is give DeArmond a 1-2-3 inning this late into the game, too. Right now, you're really hoping these are your really long innings. You're, ho you're wearing him out. You're forcing a move to the bullpen to force him out of the game. You're hoping to get a few runs across in the process. So it would be big if Gulikowski can reach here. 2-0. He takes all the way. He takes a strike. Yeah, that'd be... Let's just get a little two-out lightning going here, a little two-out magic. And a chopper to third. Gulikowski fell out of the box, so Hagen will just toss it to first to end the inning. He looked like he tripped over his own bat, or maybe his own two feet. didn't matter. It ends, it ends the inning. I don't think he was going to get there regardless. And we'll go to the sixth with West Virginia ahead 3-2. John Hagen homered in the fourth inning. He leads off the sixth with the Miners ahead 3-2. That's actually a difference right now, that solo bomb. Mm -hmm. It was also the lead off that fourth inning. Similar situation here. Here's pitch outside. Teddy's attendance, 477 on Father's Day. 
after the game, the parents who want, or the fathers who want to, can take their children down onto the field, throw, uh, yeah, to play some catch on the field. And always a fun thing to do, having a catch, you know, with your dad. So great opportunity to do it here on a nice field. One one foul tip. And yeah, and also uh, autographs after the game for all the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, wanna got um, wanna set some tables up and have the players autograph some stuff. Ball fouled off. That was a hard hit ball, but you could tell right away it was not gonna. <laughs> Yeah. It really wasn't going to stay on a straight line down the line. Not it was, at it all. Gonna hook. And on a day like this, uh, too much wind. And then, obviously, like you said, tailed off big time to the left side. One, two, swing and a miss. Ball gets away. Bolton's going to have to throw down a first, and he'll do just that. <laughs> One down for Acuna. Singled in his last at uh, bat, back in the fourth inning. F fly out the seven, uh, fly, fly out the left field is first time up. Six strikeouts now in the day for Klingon Smith. Pitch count continues to hike a little bit, though. You look at now, it's 79 pitches, the 80th coming right here. If he can get through six at 90 pitches, that'd be pretty good. It'll, well, that's not going to help. The line drive into the gap. And it'll be caught. Oh, no. Rolls all the way to the wall. Murphy gets it in. A stand up double for Acuna, his second hit of the afternoon. Now batting for the Miners, number three, catcher. Brent Hate to give up an extra Johnson. base hit, but I guess the only bright side there, one pitch, one hit. Yeah. You know, but it keeps that pitch down a little bit low, especially at this point in the game. But as we keep talking about it, you know. Klingon Smith's been giving up a lot more hits in these last three innings. Got lucky last inning, got that double play to get out of a threat, but we're just kind of continuing to see this be a theme as these uh, second batters of the inning just continue to get on base. Well, here's uh, Toddy's. He doubled and scored in the second. Also popped out to the pitcher on a bunt attempt. First pitch up high. Yeah, that's four for five. And batter, the second batter of the inning now for the Myers that has gotten a hit. Of course, yeah. the walk in the first, not an official at bat, but pretty crazy how that seems to work now. 1 0. Hard hit ball to right. Gun going back. He's got it at the warning track for the out. And now that'll allow Kuna to move up. But there's two away. So a sacrifice fly ain't going to bring them in. They still got to get a base hit. No, yeah, seven. that's the right side. Two outs in the inning. Did a good job of getting that strike out of Hagen to start things up. So it's going to take a clean base hit. But I think we're kind of seeing the contact, though. It's something to watch off of Klingon Smith. You see, yeah, he got the sacrifice fly there. But ball was hit pretty good just at the wrong spot of the field. So and that's something I think it's important to watch. And it makes a difference from, you know, just seeing this stuff, the box score later, just a fly out to right. And actually watching it, too, as you're starting to see Klingenson with maybe laboring a little bit. Yeah, well, let's see if he can get the last one here with Callaway. He's one for two this afternoon. And the first pitch is a called strike. Ball well, just rolled down the field. Yeah, I think uh, somebody in the bullpen might have let one loose there. 28, Herzing. <laughs> You'd hate to have to see the, them gone through with the pitch there and then the ball hitting the same spot. And you go, which one's the live ball? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that would make quite a dilemma. You have to throw them both the first throw place both, just to right? make sure. <laughs> You've seen pitchers before sometimes. Well, I remember Orlando Hernandez did it one time and the ball got caught in his glove. You see them throw the glove. But yeah. Can you imagine if Ferguson had to just put both in his glove and toss it to Klingon so it's probably covering first? No, yeah, ball bounces. Oh, but good block by Bolton. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine a situation like that? You say, which one? Yeah. You, so you play both to be safe. Well, out in Chillicothe, their bullpen is kind of like not that far off the line. Mm -hmm. and A little more than they are here? Yeah. Or? Uh, no. Or it's closer. Closer to oh, the line wow. than here. Almost like a San, San Francisco Giants type situation. Okay. Okay. Um, kind of what the Cubs used to have, too. Yeah. Uh, for, wow, that pitch well high. But, yeah, so he ended up, um, one of our relievers is warming up one night. He was having a rough time finding the plate, or finding the mitt, I should say. And uh, he must have thrown six balls 
onto the field of play. Are you serious? We had to keep stopping the game and throwing <laughs> him back here. At what point does the umpire say, you're not coming into this game? <laughs> <laughs> you can't kick him out yet, but at some point you would think, you know, can an umpire preemptively eject a player? You know? <laughs> I don't know, but it was just funny how they just kept they kept rolling down the third base line right to home plate. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, but I, I imagine that happens there a lot. Line drive, Meeker gets it on one hop, stumbles a little bit, but is able to recover and throw out Callaway to strand that runner at third. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on base. And on to the bottom of the six with West Virginia head three to two. The pitcher for the West Virginia Miners, Art Salazar Jr., will take over for uh, Nick Diarmond, who goes five innings, allowed two runs on five hits, two walks, six strikeouts. Quality start for Mr. Diarmond. Well, just missed it. I'd have had to go on six. Went five innings. Is that quality start six innings? I think it's five now. Is it now? Yeah. I'll have to double check that. I couldn't remember. I, th I thought it was six for some reason, but um. Well, to see, yeah, but Salazar coming in only made one appearance and took the loss against the Blue Sox, but didn't allow any earned runs in that one. So that was back on uh, June 14th. Ball hit well to left field. It's tailing a bit. And on the run, making the catch out there is Johnson for the first out. It's a nice running grab out there. This ball just continued to tail away from him. You just got to keep going with that at full speed. Sometimes you kind of wonder if for outfielders, a running grab isn't easier. And then those judgment calls that yeah. you can't quite tell where it might be going, but those running grabs might be easier to make, and he made tonight a fine catch there. Yeah, Art, Art Salazar Jr. played for the Miners last summer um, from Hope International University, which just started a baseball program out in California. This is like there you go. second year they've been around. Here's Ferguson. He'll take a curveball that is a called strike. Ferguson, 0 for 1, did draw a walk in the fourth inning. Swing strike. Last time, though, that uh, Salazar did pitch, the only time he pitched, it was four innings of relief against the Blue Sox on the 14th. Uh, so you kind of wonder if he might need to go deeper in this one. A little roller up the first. Ward's got it. He'll step on the bag. Three unassisted, two away. Well, he was a starter last year for them, I believe. So. Okay. They might just be easing them back in. Here. That's a good point. Sometimes when you're joining the team at this yeah, point in the season, you just kind of you wonder if they're ready to step in as a starter or immediately. Yeah. Maybe not. So, yeah, extended relief outings. 
to give him that, that extra throwing opportunity that you were kind of talking about. Gonzalez is 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Call it a strike. It's unfortunate. Gonzalez has been behind the eight ball all, all day. Every every uh, at bat, he's been down 0-1. He's been taking those first pitches, though. You mm -hmm. kind of wonder if maybe you should start swinging away. And, you know, two now, as you see. But you kind of wonder if maybe you should change it up, be a little more aggressive. It's 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 hard to say. You know, in a lot of ways, I think it's best on what the batter is most comfortable with. If you're most comfortable seeing that first strike, you should stick with that. You yeah. change up your stuff. That's risky. Yeah. Well. There's a pitch outside. But Toddy points out to Salazar to say, that's where I wanted it. He just didn't chase it. Fastball high. He's been very patient today, Gonzalez. He has. He's ex and that's the thing with him. It's not like he's had a, a three-pitch strikeout. All Both of his strikeouts so far have been extended at-bats. And this one, a four-pitch at-bat so far, too. 2-2, two -two, also outside. Yeah. We're in the same situation he's been twice. He struck exactly. out once on uh, swing and once on uh, a called strike three on a 3-2 count. So you kind of wonder if it's going to get to a similar case here. But, again, you like that patience in extending the at bat, but got to do something with it. Ball popped up. And Hagen, giving it a look. But it'll land on the party deck, the Miller Lite party deck. And it's kind of funny the route Hagen's taken because he can't see the batter's mm -hmm. box anymore as he went probably creeped out of the picture a little bit. He mm -hmm. went over. It's past the, the, the third base side, past the stands. We couldn't see him anymore, so it would have been tough to, to have seen if he'd gotten that catch there. You know, he might have been able to bounce that off the wall and catch it if it had landed over there because you know, look at where the umpires are at. They couldn't see him either. Payoff pitch again popped up. This is headed for the stands. There it is, first row, but nobody there to... Grab it. Look at that. A dad grabs it on Father's Day. Yeah. There we go. Souvenir. So he got a, his uh, son's got a ball, too. So they're you know, ball thieves today. And Gonzalez is down on strikes. After a good battle, unfortunately, he has to wear the hat trick here this afternoon. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left. We'll go to the seventh. 3 2, West Virginia.
Blue Sox will send Jack Herzing to the hill to begin the seventh. A good outing today from Klingen Smith. Unfortunately, he's on the hook right now. Six innings, three runs, all of them earned on eight hits, one walk, and six strikeouts. Uh, not, a, not a bad outing at all, and he's kept no. the Blue Sox in the game here. They're only down 3-2. It's a one-run game. I think that's the best way to look at it, and Klingon Smith did a pretty solid job bouncing back. We talked about from his last start and allowed nine earned runs in five innings, so much different case here, though. Here's the pitch to Herzing, or from Herzing to Johnson. It misses upstairs. Herzing has done a pretty good job in relief this week. Um... Three scoreless one, two scoreless the other. So, it's been a good week. It's one and one here. Comes in with that 2.13 ERA, 1-0 and record in seven games. 17 strikeouts, 12 walks. Yeah, had some walk issues earlier in the season. More walks than hits, too. That's the yeah. scary thing. 12 walks compared to eight hits. Last season, not too bad. 3.89 ERA, 0-1 in 23 games. But, again, those 24 walks over 32 and third innings pitched. 2-1 is popped out of play by Johnson. Johnson started the year on a temp contract for West Virginia and then worked his way onto the full-time roster. He's a bad. He, he's a two-way player. He also pitches. That kind of reminds me, you mentioned the temp contract. That's remind me of those 10-day ones they do yeah. in the NBA yeah. where it's kind of a, a show-me one. You know, A lot of times, the best case is just get signed for another 10-day trial. Well, Johnson fouls one off here. Actually, last year we had Dylan Sunnefrank on a temp contract, signed him to the uh, season-long deal. And um, he ended up finishing the season on a 16-game hitting streak. How so about that? Yeah. It's amazing what that, that desperation can really do for a player. Pitch is outside, and it is 3-2. and two. That didn't miss by much. You saw that kind of bending, just waiting to see where that was going to land. That looked like that was right there, but no go. Rocket shot to short, but Mer Meeker's there, throws in plenty of time as well, one away. Now batting number 25, the right fielder, Ryan Shaw. That brings up Ryan Shaw, who's 0 for 3 on the afternoon, pair of Ks. Here in the seventh inning, with the Blue Sox down three to two, five hits for Butler today, eight for West Virginia. And we'll now make it nine because that ball is going to roll out into left field between sh short and third. Barely got the words out of your mouth yeah. there, but yeah, just in the right spot. That's uh, Schull's first hit of the afternoon. So brings up Mitchell, 0 for 2, with a walk and a run scored. One away. Lefty lefty matchup here. The Usually, and then you got Norman, who's a left-handed, following mm -hmm. him. So that's, I think that's the biggest reason they really brought Herzing into this game was for this part of the order. Fastball is a called strike. You can only play so around so much with matchups after coming off a day like last night. You mentioned he's what four relievers, so you kind of. You can only pick and choose so many of these battles, but I think in this one, this was is pretty clear. It was meant to be because of this part of the order coming up. Oh, one inside. Yeah, yeah. That's and Klingon Smith, as you said, was getting close to 100 pitches, so it was you know, time for him to head to the head to the uh, get the ice for the day. Now they got a runner picked off. It's the throw down, and he is out. That was a closer play than I thought it should have been, but Meeker able to apply the tag. They pick off Scholl. Uh, one, three, six. Yeah, Ferguson's throw over to second base a little bit high, but that was a great tag by Meeker, as you mentioned, to, to apply the tag there. Well, he's done a really solid job defensively this season since, since rejoining the Blue Sox. And here's the 1-1 one, one from Herzing. That's right there. Good pitch. Yeah, just like that, you're one pitch away from ending the inning instead of having uh, one <laughs> out and a runner on. Hoping for another uncharacteristic uncharacteristic one, two, three inning. Yeah. So that double play two innings ago, and now you might get a one another one, two, three inning here. Thanks, hope, Hopefully thanks to that caught stealing. Two, two. Curveball dips out of the zone. Bolton liked it, though. 
That's a big thing from Bolton there. As you mentioned, pointing out to his pitcher, it's you know, saying, you know, see that again, then maybe later. I, you just couldn't get him to bite, but that's the pitch we wanted. Well, no, he did it again, and Mitchell isn't fooled. He'll head down the first two-out walk. Good patience there. Yeah, certainly was. And just salvaging the inning, too, because, you know, with two outs all of a sudden, and you're uh, the only hope to keep the inning going. Good job by him to just... Wait it out and get it. Wait, wait, didn't get his pitch, but got on base nonetheless. Foul ball. Norman singled last time up. He's, as we've documented today, the leading hitter in the league. Mm -hmm. Might have changed up. Came in hitting 444, though. We'll to see after today mm -hmm. with the, who the leader is again, though. Going into the off day tomorrow, Blue Sox head to Champion City Tuesday and Wednesday. Come home Thursday, Friday to play Chillicothe. That's when we'll be back with you. Champion City, unfortunately, does not have a broadcaster, so we'll have to follow along on point streak like uh, like you did in Danville. The ball is hit in to left field. It's a fair ball. And Murphy does a good job getting there quickly, holding the runner at second. But Norman's got his second. Now he's hitting 500 on the day, so his average <laughs> That's gonna doing help. better. That's going to help a little bit for the 0 for 2 start, back-to-back -back singles, as you mentioned. But... Good draw by Murphy, getting that in time and getting ready to throw immediately into third base because if he's not up and ready to go, if he hesitates at all, Mitchell's in there, no question. But he would have gunned down Mitchell at that point if, if he had threatened to go to third. This is the biggest at-bat of the game. Dan Ward fouls the first pitch out of play because a... This could be a turning point. Yeah. Ouch. Either way it goes, too. You know, Either way it goes. This is, in a lot of ways, could be a turning point in the game. It's yeah, I mean, Ward at the plate, two men on, two outs. You get them out here, you're only down a run going into the final. You got nine outs to play with. True. Yeah, you give a, this is a time where, you know, you give a couple of runs here. Ugh, it's hard to come back in these late late game situations. It is, and the Blue Sox keep trying to chip away at this, but haven't been able to get anything for the last couple of innings either. 1-1. One, one. It is a called strike. Ward checks the umpire. Doesn't say anything though. I think he thought that was inside a bit. Sometimes you don't need to speak to to send the message to the umpire there. You could see from, from his expression. And the one two is, is upstairs. Or is it maybe overthrowing that one just a tad. Or maybe he's trying to change the eye level here. It'll drop a curveball in on him. Yeah, it's a deception. Nope, he won the fastball. And Ward strikes out to end the inning. Big K for Herzing. No runs, one hit, no two hits, no errors, and two men left on base. Bottom of the seventh. It's stretch time here at Kelly Automotive Park with the Blue Sox trailing 3-2. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together we can work to eradicate the high level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Eric Bolton. Eric Bolton ready to go. So is Art Salazar in the bottom half of the seventh inning with the Blue Sox 
Down three to two. Bolton takes the curve ball well outside. Bolton was robbed of a base hit last time by a diving Acuna at second base. Hit it hard into that hole, but you know, like you said, great play by Acuna. Ground ball to short, fielded by Callaway. Throw will get him. Yeah, I'll turn it over to Maglione. He had an RBI single in the fourth. Hitting the ball pretty well in this in this two game set. He does, yeah. You imagine the two hits yesterday, and RBI single today. Not too bad for Maglione, but um, talk about his rolling on the mound. Uh, Salazar retired all four batters he's faced. Blue Sox haven't gotten a hit since Maglione's single back in that fourth inning. So, oh, now he's hit by Salazar. Well, get on any way you can. Uh, he didn't have a chance to get out of the way of that one, though. He just had to turn yeah. his back and let it hit him in the number. And you, it's like you said, you know, get on any way you can. It's a one-run ball game. It might hurt, but right now you're thinking, oh, boy, you know, this, this could be the start of something. Yeah, for sure. Now Ben Carew at the plate. I wonder what they'll be, what this, what they'll try here. Maybe possibly a sacrifice. He's hit the ball well, though. Yeah, he hit a fly ball out the center, but he also had that triple taken away from him in the, in, in the single. So he's, he's seen the ball well today. First pitch, he's going to bunt, and it's going to be popped foul. It's hard to say if he should bunt here. One out in the inning already. I'm almost more in favor of just taking your chances with him swinging away here. I, I would take my chances with Maglione running myself. You hit and run? No. Nah, or are you saying just, just have him steal base? Try to steal. That's a good point. It's. I just don't like the, the I don't like giving it out. Bunt. I'm yeah. with you. I'm I with hate you. it. But... We'll see if it works out. Now Carew's going to hit the ball to right field. And yeah, racing in. And not being able to make the catch out there is the right fielder, Schul. Maglione is around second on his way to third. Here's the throw. He is out. Now the ball gets away again. Carew will stay at second. Maglione is called out at third. He just got, uh, looks like. Just got awarded third base. Carew, there might have been some interference at second. I think they're saying that. Uh, yeah, uh, you're right. Acuna interfered with that play as as he was sliding into second. And now we're going to see some argument about that, but I think that's the right call. Maglin thrown out nine, four, oh. <laughs> five, right? Yes. Nine, four, five. Yeah. Yes. And then Carew gets a single, and now I would call that an error on the right fielder, let that ball so, go too. by. He misplayed that ball badly. And then he gets the third on a interference by, a, by Acuna, the second baseman. I believe so. But we're gonna, we're gonna have an argument first. Anyway, Murphy's got the tying run 90 feet away. Uh, Two yeah, outs, though. Yeah, man, it just... Yeah, Maglio, I, I, I like his aggressiveness there. That's just good defense by the Miners. That's just the way things have gone in this two-game series. What I didn't like, though, was Maglion, without any hesitation, went for third. He wasn't. He didn't read the play very well. I understand that's Cody Harold's call at third base, but at the same time, I wish Maglion had given a glance behind to see how that was being played in right field. I kind of, I, I, I had a bad feeling about it when he just kept running because yeah. the ball was already coming in. I was like, man, he ain't gonna make it. Yeah, that's what I was watching. The ball went down. I said, what's he doing? Is he looking at all, or is he just went out without, without break, without breaking at all? So, goofy situation. Well, Tanner Murphy can remedy it if he can get a base hit here. Now, Salazar ball hit well. The left field, it's hooking, it's hooking, it is a foul ball by a foot. Good Lord, we have no luck. Oh none, boy. absolutely none. And the way, <laughs> the way that left fielder Colby Johnson was going to that ball, you know, if that bounce is fair, he, if that's in fair territory, he's not making that catch, that ball's getting down. The tying run is at least coming in. Who knows from there, but I don't think that ball was going to get out, but that could have gone down if that was a fair ball. <sighs> Game of inches, and the Blue Sox are down by a few feet here this afternoon. It just says, oh, my goodness. Now it's 0-2 after a strike called. There's no luck. 
Well, I guess if we do, we do have any type of luck, it's bad. That ball is also going to go foul. Johnson giving it a look, but he won't get there. <laughs> what a weird game. What a weird it's inning. a weird set. Last night there was about eight g plays in the game that were weird, and every single one of them went, <laughs> went against Butler. They say you make your own luck, but sometimes I don't think I, that applies. Uh, today's making is really contesting that theory. But you just kind of wonder. This is what we kind of look back at. Again, it's it's early to be saying this, but with that dumb luck yesterday, uh, winning those first four in a row against West Virginia to start the season was pretty big. You kind of wonder if it was going to even out. Murphy is hit by the pitch and head down to first. Second batter hit by a pitch in this inning, too. So you wonder if Salazar is kind of losing a little control here. Well, it's up to Joe Gunn now. Ah, uh, signs being placed by Toadie. I was just going to say, I, if I'm Cody, I'm sending Murphy and then sending uh, Carew on the delayed steal, but... Toddy just pointed out to both of them as if to say, that ain't going to happen. The Sox have tried that before. No, yeah. they've tried it. They've been successful mm -hmm. a few times this summer. So that's good scouting right there and good awareness of the situation by Toddy. Well, West Virginia's probably maybe seen so it. Yeah, they did, they've done it before, them. too. Mm -hmm. you know, they, were, they did that to us four times in one game a few years ago. Gunn fouls a pitch off at one and one. So now I think if I'm... If, um, Cody, I, I, I would just send Murphy here because if they throw to second, there's two outs there, so it's a little harder. That's true. Because he could get tagged out before the run comes out. And there goes Murphy, and they will fake the throw to third, and Carew will head back there, stolen base. So <laughs> that that works out just be, just fine. It does, and that's what I was just gonna say. It's it's it was great call by Carew to hold up and not even attempt to move because he probably would have been nailed. Toddy's was ready to, that, th to that's throw a, over there. Yeah, that's all, that's what I was gonna say right before mm -hmm. they did. Is even they're not gonna throw it a second, so you might as well put another runner in scoring position. Ball hit out into left center, and almost overrunning it, but getting there in time is Johnson for the out. That he almost overran that ball. He had a long hook on it from the wind, but he did. Got hit to the right spot, too. It was an open spot in the outfield, but good run in, and as you mentioned, just held up to catch it. So no runs, one hit, no air. Oh, one air. I, I, I give him one air. On one air? Yeah. yeah, was there a hit in there, too? I'm trying to think. Well, I don't know if there was a hit. Uh, yeah, there was uh, the single back. That's right, that's right. And then, uh, then the air. Yeah, then two men left on base. So through seven, it's West Virginia three, Butler two. Jack Kersing is ready to go. Trying to keep this a one-run ball game. Uh, Blue Sox have had their opportunities this afternoon, and they, they, they haven't capitalized, but at the same time, they've also had some really, really garbage luck in this game. You hate to blame it on that, but you're right. It's been more than just one circumstance, too. The, the foul ball that barely went foul, nearly was fair. Another one down the line that was ruled foul, but was fair. It wasn't even close. Yeah, it's but fun attempt here by uh, Hagen. He, uh, I'm not sure what uh, what was going on there, but he he almost fouled it into the miners' dugout. 
with a bun attempt. But uh, yeah, so but of course they've also run themselves into outs. At th made two outs at third base. Um, you know, Those mistakes just come back to get you when you need some help later. It seems like you know. Yeah, we had Carew on third with one out, couldn't get him in, and it yeah, it's just a uh, it's a situation now where you're, you're running out of time. Yeah. They seem to have an opportunity every inning to tie the game, but you haven't been able to do it. Not exactly. You look at West Virginia hasn't scored since the fourth. So, it, 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 like you said, in every inning since then, the, the Blue Sox have had their chances. They just haven't cashed in. Pitch outside. Two and one to Hagen, who homered in the fourth. That's the difference right now. That was the last run to come across. That's right. For the minors, at least. Blue yeah. Sox answered in the fourth, in the bottom half. High chopper. Magleone has to charge in, throws the first, gets him. I'd like to see him get two runs in the bottom of the eighth and then just go into that ninth of the save situation. Yeah, save situation, yeah. You don't have to add any drama. We saw it was that Friday night. There was a chance for a potential walk-off in that ninth. You had the tying yeah. run aboard. You had to go ahead aboard, I believe. I couldn't quite couldn't get, get either, though. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's like like I said, you'd rather just not have to deal with that down to your final three outs in the ninth, you know. Well. But time is running out. You're right. Here's Acuna. He doubled and single. He's reached base the last few times he's been at it the plate so he's been a tough out this afternoon obviously 1-0 2 -0 now Kuna from Venezuela we have uh, Christian Webb from Ontario uh, I believe the, my, uh, the the Dans have a pitcher from Puerto Rico okay so there's a few right guys down. from although Puerto Rico is part of the United States part, foul ball here and Ferguson is underneath it in foul territory and he has it for the out we talk about a lot of times that extended foul room over there makes for, and you gotta, you hate to say, you gotta get some good wood on it to foul it away. <laughs> you yeah. know, because a lot of these foul balls are playable down these third and first base lines, and that's exactly what happened just there. Well, two away. Here's Toddy's, the catcher, and he swings and misses. Good fastball from Herzing. Oh, I hope you're enjoying your Father's Day, wherever you are. Ball hit well, but foul. Uh, right field line, not a play. Uh, I'm Jaron still joined by Joel, no Joel Norman this afternoon. Uh, got a good one here, 3-2 in favor of the West Virginia Miners. And this is a foul ball that will make it out of the stadium. Still hasn't landed yet. No. I was hoping to hear that bounce back here behind us, but <laughs> it made uh, it over this made it over the Duke Brooklyn. It must have. Uh, didn't hear any uh shattering glass either, so it looks like not too bad. Here's the O2. Another ball fouled off the right field line. He's he's late on his swings, but he's getting good You're wood right. on him. You're right, I was just taking that too, is they're all late and but yeah, the contact is good. So you're thinking low and away or inside and low here to try and put him away. Yeah, the Gotta be on your toes in all fields. Another chopper foul. This one into the, no, not into the Myers dugout. I hit the fence in front of it. But um, he's like uh, Itro, he's covering the whole plate. You know. Yeah, that's what made him. It makes he's him still now. Even his average is down. Makes him so tough to retire. The O2 again. Yeah, it's a bouncer. Good block by Bolton. Seeing hers and go with that, uh, those off-speed pitches low, and sometimes it, that was inside the pitch before was away. And he noted what we saw, too, is a hard contact on three straight foul balls, so you've got to change something up. Miners with the pitcher warming up. Uh, looks like 20-something. I can't get the number right now. Pitch inside. If he turns a little bit around here, he'll be able to get the number. But he doesn't He doesn't oblige. Green jerseys don't make it much easier, too. 20-something. Swing and a miss from Todd. He's to end the inning. Good inning from Herzing, and that's exactly what you needed out of him. A one, two, three inning. And Bolton goes out and gives him a high five as he heads to the dugout. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Blue Sox down by one. Three to two.
Well, the minor in the bullpen out there is Sean Doomser Jr. He's still throwing, but Alex Art Salazar Jr. is going to try to work his third inning of relief. Gulikowski, Meeker, and Ferguson, the three guys he do up the face. Get that heart of the order yep. for the Blue Sox. As you and I were just talking about off air, Gulikowski, Meeker, Ferguson, three, four, and five. As good of a chance as the Blue Sox are going to have to tie this game up. Salazar's first pitch is inside to Gulikowski. 0 for 3 today. Fly out, ground out, strike out on his line to this point. Yeah, hard hit grounder. That's a fair ball, but Ward will pick it and head to the bag. Three unassisted, one down. It's a nice play by Ward over at first. Raul hard hit that ball was down the line. Kind of wonder if that would shoot past him for extra bases. But not the case. Meeker's been solid today. He's two for three. Still no base hits, though, since that fourth inning. The RBI single by Maglione. We've had a couple runners reach base, obviously, last inning. But, but since then, nothing else. Salazar wants a new ball. He'll, he'll gladly take that one out of play. Probably had a scuff mark on it from, from the bat of... Gulikowski. Normally, when a guy gets an out with the ball, he'll stick with it. Uh, sometimes. Yeah, maybe, like you said, though. Yeah, Probably had a if, if the grip of it is off at all, you might as well throw it away since you have the option to. 1 0 is in there for a called strike. Meeker thought about swinging, but held up. He's got two singles today, and that'd be a big start for the Blue Sox if he could just get aboard here. Ferguson on deck. Called strike. And Meeker down one and two. Salazar is ready to go. Meeker takes outside. Meeker's been good today. Yeah, the night off last night. Oh, hard hit ball, but we have a hook foul. Salazar in his third inning of relief. He's been really solid so far, too, and it's only his second appearance this season for the Miners, but you know, you're hoping to force a move to the bullpen because he's either given up a run to tie it or, or worse. Meeker takes outside, 3-2. He's worked the full count. Just get on for Fergie, right? That's what you're thinking. That's the go-ahead run on deck. Oh, nice cut, a foul ball by Meeker to stay alive. Hit the post with the shot, too. Yeah, hit the pipe. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. That's a good I call. Do, I had to do the Doc Emmerich reference. Yeah. Missing hockey right now. Yeah. You know, it's been a week since the Penguins won the cup, but missing hockey. Hard hit ball, base hit out in the left. Meeker has his third hit of the afternoon, and that is the tying run on base with one out. That looked exactly like that one he had in the fourth. Just going to the opposite field, over where the shortstop normally is going to be at. Good piece of hitting by James Meeker. Once again, three for four on the day. Like you said, after that off day last night, coming out of the gates, flying today. All right. Ferguson takes a called strike on a fastball. I wonder how aggressive Meeker's going to be on the base paths here with one out and the double play definitely in the minds of the Miners. Check of second. And here's the pitch. It's low. Do you try hit and run? It's kind of risky in a case like this, but you got to get Meeker in scoring position. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Not with Ferguson. He's not a not a big contact guy. That's he's true. A, he's a he, you know he's a great power hitter, but he's not one that you're no, going to ask right. for. No, you're not going to get much else. So one and two now after the foul ball. He he's a, he's a big he's a big power hitter. That's what you can say. He's a strikeout candidate. Yeah. He's swing and a miss candidate for sure. Half of his 16 hits are home runs. So, yeah, yeah. to put that into <laughs> better perspective. One, two is low and away. 
only like two of those other eight are, are double. So that's it's, it's the weak hitting singles or you know or balls getting out of the park. I wonder. You, know, you got Gonzalez on deck. If Ferguson is able to reach, he's he's had a rough day at the plate, three strikeouts. So I wonder if you you bring in Scott here. That's what I keep thinking. I'm surprised he hasn't been used yet. But, but now at this point, this might be the ideal situation. Gonzalez is on deck too, as you mentioned. Yeah, and then Bolton after him, 0 for three as well. Ferguson strikes out. Yeah, and there are two down. So I think yeah, go with Gonzalez here with two outs. And so maybe you, you, you. Cody Harold's well. coming up to talk to him. We'll see what he's going to say. He's going to pinch it. Yeah. It's going to be Scott. So yeah, Gonzalez was announced. It was planned to go up, but I think it's Harold just stepping in and saying, you know what, we got to get a jolt here. And then Webb is coming out, so he would hit for Bolton here. And he just entered the game normally as a yeah. catcher, yeah. And then you could keep Scott as a DH. Certainly. So Gonzalez's day is now done. Manning, and here is Calvin Scott. Calvin Scott. Yeah, yeah. This, is, uh, this is what I would have done, too. This is his I think it's face. the right timing. I know nothing against Ray. It's just not been his day so mm -hmm. far. He's a, he's a good hitter and all. It's just, you know, some days it's not your day. And no, you're right. The, we'll get with the best bat off the bench. Scott takes in a uh, called strike. 387 average on the season for Scott again. As we said, he's not qualified among league leaders, but it's the best on the Blue Sox so far. 0-1, Scott takes uh, called strike. Both pitches right on the inside corner. Now he got to got to protect. And he turns out hits it hard, but foul. Nearly snared by one of the miners yeah. on the edge of the dugout. He had that glove out. If he makes that catch, <laughs> obviously not an out, but yeah, but a heck of a grab if he had done it. It's starting to get a little dark behind us. Seeing the storm clouds coming in, as you said earlier, it's supposed to be around five or so. It's yeah, it's only four, uh, quarter to four right now, so we got a little bit of time, I think. Well, it's coming. It's yeah, coming. Probably. Been feeling the wind all day. The 0-2, Scott strikes out on a high fastball to end the inning. So Salazar does a great job out of the pen, allowing just two hits in his three innings of work. We'll go to the ninth with West Virginia leading 3-2. to two. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesocks.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox. Paven Parks takes over for the Blue Sox on the mound. Gets a strike across to Callaway. Parks is a miss here. Herzing, good job out of the pen. Two innings. Allowed one hit. Ball popped up on the infield. Meeker's underneath it. One away. So, 
or actually, I think, yeah, two hits for for uh, West Virginia up of Herzing. A, a walk and two strikeouts. So good job out of the pen for Herzing, keeping this thing a 3-2 game. Now Parks is one down for Johnson. And the pitch is bouncer in to Bolton. Before that pop out, you know, Parks came with that 540 ERA. Obviously, that stands out, but only in three games so far, only five innings pitched as well. So, called strike two and one. Yeah, he's he's a uh, very good reliever. We saw actually he made starts for us last summer. Yeah, swing and miss on a heavy fastball. Two and two, but uh, sliding into a reliever role here, mainly because he's going to get more playing time as a <laughs> infielder mm. too. Two two pass parks to Maglione, and he will take care of it. Four three goes Johnson two away. Prep a good point though, just kind of a change in his role a little bit. Kind of seems like you know you shift into being a regular player, but. Nice to still have that option as a pitcher in there, too. You know, you can use in a relief situation like this on a day when he's not going to be playing in the field. Yeah, and here is uh, Scholl. He is one for four. He singled in the seventh, but then was picked off. He swings and misses at Park's delivery here. Pitch away. <laughs> Pat's uh, scoreboard's a little off right now. <laughs> a few errors to make there. Three balls, three strikes, the count apparently. He's got the out right. Well, two outs right now. Yeah, a little. Oh, yeah, great. Roller up the first base line. Parks fields, throws the first to end the inning. So now the Blue Sox has their last chance. They're down 3 2. Christian Webb takes a called strike from Sean Doomser Jr. who is looking for a save here. With the Miners ahead 3-2 in the bottom of the ninth. Ball hit out the left field. And Johnson drifts over a little bit, makes the catch one away. And Christian Webb pinch hitting there for Eric Bolton, hoping to get on. Just 
unable to there, but a tough go here lately for the Blue Sox. Salazar with a good bridge. He does not allow a run on two hits. And he struck out three. Didn't walk anybody, but he hit two. Maglio with a line drive base hit. Tying runs aboard here, and he's going for two. And they tripped out there, so Maglione thought about three, but he'll stay at second a with a double. A uh, trip out there is center by Norman, but and he looks like he might be hurt, actually. Uh, he's limping around out there, but... The dugout's kind of looking to see yeah. how he's feeling, and it looks like they're going to leave him out there. Maybe but he's just upset. Could be a little bit of both. But the tie run is at second here with one out. Here's Ben Carew looking to tie this game up. We've said that a few times today. Not Ben Carew personally, but the, the Blue, Blue Sox, Sox in general. Overall, yes, that's true. First pitch, a little bit low to Carew, who has a pair of singles on the afternoon. Murphy on deck. He, he was snake bit earlier. It'd be nice to see him get rewarded here. That would make for an interesting uh, storyline for this game afterwards. I feel like we have to win it now because I feel like it's going to storm in about 15 minutes. Yeah, you can There's see the great wall of black death behind us uh, here. <laughs> on our broadcast, you, know, you can't see. It looks like clear, pretty nice skies. Ahead. Ground ball, and Maglione is picked off second. And now we'll get into a rundown. Carew. And now he's going to get back to second. He's going to be safe. Maglione saves it out with some great base running out there in second. Some bad base running to start, and then he makes up for it. I don't even know. He's, he's there. Fielder's choice for Carew. Two men on, one out. What in the world was that? Go figure, right? Go figure. The fact that there wasn't at least one out recorded there is stunning. It doesn't matter, though, because right now Blue Sox have a golden opportunity in front of them, right. one out in the inning. I'd love to see Murphy get rewarded because he, he missed tying this game by a half inch <laughs> back, in, did. back in the seventh inning. And it wasn't – now ball bounces away. Maglione's on his way to 30. He's there. Tying run is 90 feet away. Carew stays put. Sox fans, it's time to get loud. Talked about that bad luck earlier in the game. Maybe it's run out here. Blue, Blue Sox have gotten a lot of breaks in this inning. You talk about the ball Maglione hits out there to left center. Somehow he gets the second. Somehow he doesn't get picked off. Somehow he ends up at third. You gotta say, it just they keep finding a way, the Blue Sox do. Toddy's giving the signs here. Murphy. Ready to go. And the pitch. Line drive out the right. This should tie it. Making the catch out there is good, is Shul. The throw is cut off. And Maglione scores. This game is tied at three. Good job by Murphy. It took five innings, but alas, the Blue Sox have tied it up again. How about that? Like we said, that was the that seemed like that was the final couple breaks there. It was going to be just enough for the Blue Sox, and they were able to tie it up right there. And Murphy did exactly what he had to. He hit it deep enough there. It wasn't even going to be close to being a play at the plate. And we got a tie game. Right, now we got time called, and the infield will gather. Blown save for Doomser. No matter what happens here. He's yeah. That's the good thing here for the Blue Sox. They're, they're still working right now. They still got some opportunities here. Yes, two outs and runner at first. That's the winning run at this point. Well, Joe Gunn has an opportunity to be the hero. I'd like to see Carew take off here, try to get into scoring position. I wonder if he will or not. I think that's the, the biggest question here is you'd like to have him in scoring position with, and give Gunn a chance to drive him in. He still might be able to, though. You know, right before this at bat, it looked like Joe Gunn's, I think it was his dad or someone, it looked like he went up and talked to him on deck before. So, and you know, he may have gotten a couple of words of encouragement right here. We're about, we got about a half hour here. Carew goes off to second, throw down, and he's safe at second base. And we're going to have an argument here. 
from Mr. Joe Goddard. Filling in for Tim Epling, who's not on the trip this weekend. That was a close play. It was. I thought he got him myself, but we'll take it. It looked like you know, the throw beat him, but the tag did not. I think that was the biggest thing to take away from Carew sliding into second. It was, it was clear the throw was really good and was close, but the tag that was applied was just a little late from what I saw. So there you go. Runner in scoring position now for Gunn. Kind of like what we saw in that first inning. Remember, we had uh, the wild pitch allowed Murphy to reach, and Gunn single to drive Murphy in for the first run of the day for the Blue Sox. So, you know, potentially you know, history repeating itself here. All right, well, here we go. Ben Crew out in second. It represents the winning run. And when picking up, Gunn takes inside. Able to bounce out of the way. Gulikowski on deck. He's 0 for 4 to this point. You can just see those clouds creeping in now. The picture a lot darker. Every yeah. time I look back, it gets worse. Yeah, it does. 2-1. Ground ball to first. Ward backs up, takes it to the bag himself. We're going extras here this afternoon. Three unassisted ends the inning. But the good news, the Blue Sox get a run on one hit. No errors and leave a man on base. All right, first time of the year, the Blue Sox are going to extra innings. All right, here we go. Extras for the first time this summer for Butler. It's 3-3 uh, in the top of the 10th. Mitchell against Paven Parks. He might ask to, be, to go a few innings. Boy, it just keeps getting darker and darker. Thought the wind was bad when we first started. It's about back to where it was at the beginning of this game. First pitch is a little bit away. In fact, I'm going to take my sunglasses off. That's I was going to say, I might not need them anymore. No. <laughs> you know, as we near 4 o'clock here on the East Coast, it's just... It, it feels like it's you know eight o'clock. It said four thirty on on my weather app. Okay. So that gives me it gives us a half hour. I don't know if I trust it though. <laughs> Clouds <laughs> moving fast behind us every time we we look around. But three three, two one count. Blue Sox spent all day trying to tie the run up, tie the game up. They finally do in the ninth. Uh, now it's three and one. They've never led in this game either. So that's something. No, that's true. Uh, a win at this point is the first lead of the day. Parks is ready to go. Here's the pitch. It's fouled off. Oh my God, I wonder if they're going to put the lights on here real soon. That's the, I think that's the biggest question right now. As it continues to get darker, it's going to get tough to see things on this field. It's a pretty dark field right now. And it says you kind of wonder if they're going to start that slow transition of the lights. 2-2 two -two is uh, low. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, if, the, w the one thing you got to look out for is lightning. That's mm, when Biggest they, concern, yeah. without a doubt. And it's definitely a thunderstorm coming. Called strike three. Mitchell thought he had a ball. He was headed down to first, but that's uh, Park's first strikeout of the game. Nice. Uh, ring up there by the home final fire proper. It's a little more into that one than he had some of the other ones. I think yeah. he, he's thinking about this weather right now too. Norman takes high and away. Norman is two for four, a couple of singles. His last two at bats in the fifth and seventh. Parks delivery, 
He is right there for a called strike. And here's the 1-1. One, one. So we got confirmation on that as Webb is in the ball game as the catcher now. Mm -hmm. so when he pinched it for Bolton, yeah. correct. So Webb is in. Uh, that's the only change for the Blue Sox in the field. Uh, I, I want to say um, um, we'll wait for this pitch here. 2-1. He's in there for a strike. He's in there for a called strike. Pat told me in between innings that uh, the reason Maglione got back mm -hmm. was because the third baseman, w when he took it out of his glove, dropped the ball. So that's gotcha. an E5, and that's the reason he made it back. And it is starting to rain here, it looks like. We got an umbrella up. I don't know how much that's going to help that poor kid because with the wind the way it is, it's just going to probably blow it apart. That's a good point. But there he's got it up. Three years on the day, though, I think that's the big thing to take away from this game so far for West Virginia. That's They've really shot themselves in the feet right there. Yep. 2-2. Two -two. Is a foul ball into general mission and out of general mission. Boy, that was close to smacking a couple of people. Well, I think after this half inning, we're going to have to start moving some equipment. Let's see, no rain little, yet. Little chopper right back to park. Throw to first, two away. Yeah, amongst the distraction of the um, incoming storm has been the, so the impressive work, really, by having parks on the mound. He's just, what, that's three ground ball outs now. And the one yeah, pop-up as an out and a strikeout in there. He's done a really solid job thus far in relief. And that can be kind of a tough situation when you're that guy who, won, well, first, the Blue Sox are down. Your pressure's on you to keep it right where it is. Now it's the exact same thing. It's extra innings. You don't want to give them a chance. A little chopper off the plate. Meeker chasing it. Will fire to first and get Ward by a half step. Now we'll go to the bottom of the 10th with the Blue Sox having a chance to win it. It's 3-3. Three, three. All right, well, folks, it looks like we're going into a lightning delay here at uh, Kelly Automotive Park. Uh, so we're going to tear down uh, some of our stuff and head inside. Hopefully, we'll be back to play here pretty soon. But a lightning delay here in the 10th inning. We'll be right back. 